The quickest way to get any distribution of Linux up and running is by using a live CD or live DVD disk that contains a bootable image of the Linux distribution. You boot a computer from the live DVD and Linux is loaded and runs entirely from the computer's memory rather than from the computer's hard drive. Live DVDs give you a try before you install opportunity to check if you like an operating system before you install it. And also to verify that the OS will run on your computer's hardware. If Kali runs on your computer, you can continue running Kali live in memory or install Kali on your computer from the live DVD. One other huge benefit of live DVDs is that they allow you to access a computer's storage systems without booting the computer from its own hard disk. In fact, when Kali is booted from a live DVD, it will not touch the computer's local hard drive or other storage systems unless you configure it to do so. The Kali Linux Live DVD has an option to run in forensics mode to guarantee that any storage systems accessed by Kali will be always mounted as read-only. This capability is not only essential for making forensic copies of digital evidence, but also very useful for checking if a file system is encrypted running an analysis for the presence of malware and rootkits, and yes, preventing the corruption of evidence during a forensic examination. In this demo, we will see the steps for running Kali Linux from a live DVD inside a VMware player. These steps include burning a Kali live DVD ISO image file to a DVD disk, loading and booting a Kali live DVD ISO file in VMware player, selecting in which operating mode to run Kali, and logging into, off of, and shutting down Kali. First, I will be showing you how to boot the Kali Live DVD image inside a VMware player. If you have already downloaded the Kali Linux Live DVD image and installed VMware player, then you are ready to go. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please watch the clip Downloading Kali Linux to learn about Kali ISO files in VMware player. If you would rather boot the Kali Live DVD from an optical drive in your computer, you will first need to burn the ISO image to a DVD-R disk. In Windows, right-click on the ISO file and select the Burn Disk Image menu item. The Windows Disk Image Burner window will appear. Make sure the drive letter of your read-write optical drive is selected and that you have a recordable DVD in your drive. Check the Verify Disk After Burning checkbox and click the Burn button to create a bootable Kali Live DVD. If you use other software to burn DVDs, be sure to burn the ISO image to the DVD and not the ISO file itself. If the computer can't boot the DVD you just burned, you probably accidentally burned the ISO file to disk or didn't finalize the burning process. Also make sure your computer is set to boot first from its optical drive. If CDs and DVDs are a thing of the past to you, and carrying around Kali in your pocket on a USB flash drive is your idea of convenience or modern nerd fashion, have a look at this article in the Kali Linux website on how to burn the Kali ISO file to a bootable USB device using Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X. Now let's start at VMware Player and create a virtual machine for running the Kali Linux Live DVD. Click on Create a New Virtual Machine. Select Installer Disk Image File and browse to where you've downloaded the Kali Live DVD ISO file. Notice the VMware player detects that the ISO file contains a Debian version 7 operating system. Next we choose the location to place the virtual machine files. Although Kali will be running only in the virtual machine's memory, the files for the VM itself must be written to disk. In this demo, I am leaving the default location and naming the VM Kali Linux 1.1.0 Live DVD. The next selection asks how large the virtual disk for the virtual machine should be. In this demo, we won't actually be installing Kali in the VM, but if you want to give installing Kali a try, 20 to 30 gigabytes is a good size. Also, I like to store the virtual disk as a single file for better performance. Before we create the virtual machine, we should bump up the RAM allocated for the VM. Click the Customize Hardware button and change the memory to 1024 megabytes. You can leave the other settings at their default. Click the Close button and then the Finish button to boot up the Kali Live DVD. If any dialog boxes warning of possible incompatibilities are shown, 
or a notification to update VMware tools for Linux appears, just dismiss them for now. The Kali Live DVD boots to this menu and allows you to select how you want Kali to start. For this course, the menu items you are interested in are Live 686 PAE to run Kali in Live mode and Live Forensics mode for mounting all file systems in read-only mode. Use the Install menu item if you want to install Kali to a computer's hard drive or to the VM's virtual hard drive. Now let's select Live 686 PAE to select the default and boot Kali in Live mode. The output you see in the terminal window is everything needed to run Kali Linux, being started and checked. You can dismiss the VMware message box at the bottom of the terminal window asking if you have finished installing the guest OS. In about a minute, we will see the Kali desktop appear. Just in case you didn't think this startup is very fast, consider that for this demo, I am running the Kali Live DVD in a virtual machine hosted inside of VMware Player 7 that is running in 64-bit Windows 7 that itself is hosted in a virtual machine inside of VMware Workstation 11 that is running on 64-bit Windows 7. VMs running inside of VMs will take a performance hit, yes. But how cool is it that you can do that in the first place? Oh, I wanted to show you how to log into Kali, but the live DVD starts up already logged into the root account. So let me log out using the system menu and get back to the login prompt. You can see the system menu is also one place that you can use to shut down Kali 2. Here is the user account login selection box. Just click on other, enter root for the username, and the default password is tor, T-O-O-R, which is root backwards. You don't need to change the root password if you were just running in live mode, but changing it is recommended for securing all installations of Linux systems. This was a really quick demo because starting Kali from a live DVD doesn't take very long. I demoed how to use the Windows Native Disk Image Burning Utility, how to start VMware Player, create and boot a virtual machine from a live DVD ISO file, and log into, out of, and shut down Kali Linux. If you are getting a taste for virtualization and are thinking of using it for yourself, have a look at my next demo where we run Kali from a pre-built virtual machine. And it's even easier than what you saw me demo here.